This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Three and a half years ago, Sony released what was probably the most important camera in recent history, and that's the a7 III. And throughout those three and a half years, many other camera brands not only matched, but went beyond the capabilities of the a7 III. But now, Sony has released a new addition to their fleet, the a7 IV. So now we're here in studio with Michaela to put this guy to the test and see if it's truly the best for both photo and video. You know, like the a7 III was, but this is newer, so it should be better. This camera boasts a 33 megapixel full frame sensor, which is a big upgrade from the a7-3's 24 megapixels, and is also well above other competitors like the Canon R6 and Nikon Z6 II. Speaking of the sensor, the new a7-4 adopts the same sensor that the a1 has. And since the a1 is at the top of the Sony food chain, this is a welcomed addition. For most uses, the higher megapixel count won't really impact you that much since you'll most likely be viewing your photos on a digital platform. That being said, 33 megapixels will give you more room to crop in and reframe a shot without a drastic loss of quality. The a7 IV shoots up to 10 frames per second with full autofocus tracking. Yes, this is the same as the a7 III, but if you need more than that, you're gonna need to look towards the Sony A1, which is in a slightly different category for people with a slightly different experience level and slightly different tax bracket. Now there are 15 stops of dynamic range in this camera. That's only one more than with the a7 III. But combined with this new processor, I think that we're in good shape to see some incredible highlight and shadow gradations. Next up, let's talk about some of the video features. The new a7 IV is a healthy step up from its predecessor in terms of video functionality. It shoots 4K 24 and 30, which is oversampled from 7K. This is a small bump from the a7 III 4K that was oversampled from 6K. Honestly, not something you're gonna notice. This year's flagship feature is that this camera shoots 4K 60, but yes, there is a but, it shoots it in Super 35 mode. So there's going to be a considerable crop. As you can see here, both of these shots were taken at 35 millimeters. The shot on the left was shot in 4K24, and the shot on the right in 4K60. There's clearly a noticeable crop that you'll have to keep in mind when shooting in this format. That being said, 4K60 is still a great feature to have in a camera like this. In fact, you won't get any better video features until you reach for the a7S III. Like the a7S III, however, the new a7 IV can shoot 10-bit 422 and has S-Log3 and S-Cinetone built in. Basically, when it comes to video, this camera is inching a little bit closer to the a7S III, but it doesn't have 4K 120, and when it shoots 4K 60, it's in Super 35. One feature that the a7 IV does have that the a7S III doesn't is a focus map. This is a feature that you probably didn't even know you needed, but can be much more clear than focus peaking, and here's why. So when you have focus mapping turned on, you're gonna see a lot of different colors, which is kind of confusing, but it is a map. It's a map to tell you where everything is in relation to your subject. So your subject is going to be translucent. You'll be able to see exactly what's in focus. What's closer to the camera is going to be a warmer tone. It'll be red. What's behind your subject is going to be blue. And then the lighter or darker that color, that'll tell you how close or far away that item is from your subject. So the darker it is, that's the further away it is from your subject. You'll, you'll get it. Speaking of focus, let's talk about the autofocus features that do get a big upgrade. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website.
I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. Now back to the video. The A7 IV adopts the same autofocus system as the A1. This is obviously incredible for a body that costs a third of what the A1 costs. This camera has a total of 759 phase detection autofocus points, which is a good jump from the A7 III's 639 points and puts it right in line with the A1. And in addition to the already faster than before human and animal autofocus, there's now bird autofocus. So there's that. In my testing, the autofocus seemed to be really snappy. I can't say for certain how much faster it is than the a7 III, but I would say that it's definitely on par with my a7S III, which is phenomenal. For video, the new focus system features autofocus touch tracking, which I found to be super helpful, especially if I have a really busy scene and need to lock on focus to my subject. It also has breathing compensation, and that helps with focus breathing. Now, you may be wondering, what the heck is focus breathing? Let me explain. On most camera lens combinations, when you change the focus on your lens at a specified focal length, you'll see a drastic change in composition. Notice the edges of this scene as I change my focus point from the closest subject to the furthest subject. The lens appears to be cropping in and out as I change focus points. This is classic in most consumer level cameras. The new a7 IV has breathing compensation, which will automatically apply a slight crop in camera as you change focus so that you don't notice the focus breathing as much. Take note that this feature will only work with certain lenses. Another really neat feature is that this camera doesn't need to reconfirm the focus point every time you half press the shutter button. If you look at how my a7C focuses, you can see the camera hunt for focus every time I half press the shutter. And on the new a7 IV, the camera doesn't hunt and it's a lot more confident with finding focus the first time. Finally, let's talk about the body. Overall, this camera feels a lot like my a7S III. It's a bit thicker, and that's because of the grip, but that makes me feel a lot more confident holding onto it, and especially when I have a longer lens on it, it feels a little more balanced. My pinky actually has somewhere to be now. <laughs> The a7 IV has two SD card slots, a CF Express card slot, it finally has a full HDMI port, and not the useless mini port on the a7 III. There's also a new double layer dial system on the top, which is supposed to be a more convenient method. Uh, my husband Chris loves the new dial, but my fancy hands find it a bit difficult to switch between the different modes. The EVF is also way higher resolution than the a7 III, which I love because the EVF is my best friend. And you know what else is my best friend? A tilty, flippy screen. Thanks, Sony. The a7 IV is a welcomed upgrade from its older brother, the a7 III. And if you're considering stepping up and making the switch from your a7 III, I would definitely say it's worth the investment. If you're just entering into the pro universe of cameras, this is a great option for you. If you're an advanced amateur or a pro hybrid shooter, then this is the one you should pick up. There were some upgrades with this camera that we were all expecting and I'm very happy about. There are some new ones that I'm excited to play around with, but overall, all, we still got 4K60 with the Super 35 crop, and that's all I'm gonna say. Overall, as Sony's flagship prosumer camera, the a7 IV packs a hell of a punch for both photo and video. It was true with the a7 III, and is now even more true with the a7 IV in 2021. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go eat a burrito now.